So as a quick review, in part one of our investigation of objectivity, we considered the claim of what objectivity is, and it actually includes two parts. So one is that our beliefs and assertions are either true or false, kind of like the law of excluded middle. And then the second one, that the world exists and has the features it does, in large part, independently of humans and what we have to say. At the end of part one, we considered Van Inwagen's criticism of this social construction argument, which relied on language. And then once we saw that you separate out and distinguish between propositions and sentences, that argument kind of falls apart. So now we want to continue with this explo exploration of anti-realism. And so the anti-realist says, makes this claim, right, that objective truth and falsity do not exist. So what we need to do is make sure that we're really clear about the claim. And this is actually challenging, right? So how are we to understand this claim that objective truth and falsity don't exist? Well, there are some criteria that must apply when we understand it. First of all, it has to apply to itself, right? It, it could not be something that was an exception to its own general principle. As a general metaphysical claim, it has to be apl applicable to everything, including itself. And so uh, whatever truth means, the anti-realist wants to be able to say that anti-realism is true and objectivity is false. And it must, of course, be meaningful. Obviously, we would want that. And it cannot be an objective truth, right? If, if it's an objective truth, obviously, it's going to be false. So it can't be an objective truth. So whatever we understand anti-realism to be, we have these three criteria that it needs to meet. So how could we understand anti-realism that meets those three criteria? Here's a, a different approach, other than the social construction argument. Maybe anti-realism fits in with our experience. Maybe that's what we should say. And so when, what the objectivist claims is true, it merely expresses the idea that it fits in with our experience. So there is no objective truth. Whenever we say something is true, what we really mean is that it fits in with our experience. Now, the anti-realist claims that there's nothing above and beyond fitting, with our, fitting in with our experience so that we would claim that such a claim is objectively true, right? That's, that's all there is to it, it fitting in with our experience. Now, a, a problem here is that Anti-realism is a philosophical claim, and as such, sense experience is not going to go against it or fit in with it either, right? Philosophical claims can be informed by things we recognize from our senses, but philosophical claims don't directly go for or against sense experience, right? So anti-realism doesn't really seem to pass that kind of test. If sense experience is what is intended, then anti-realism uh, fails its own test. It, it doesn't really matter. Right? Okay, so continuing on here, that it, it can't be fitting in with our sense experience. So what other kind of experience could it be? Maybe the anti-realist means that anti-realism fits in with the experience of evaluating arguments for anti-realism and finding them convincing. Now, an immediate problem here is that it certainly doesn't fit in with the experience of the realist, the one who thinks that objectivity is correct, right? that they don't find this convincing. Uh, so it's not correct that it fits in with the experience of minds kind of taken collectively. So, Maybe anti-realism is said to fit in with my 
that is the anti-realist experience? Well, maybe, but if that's the case, then there really isn't a disagreement between the objectivist and the anti-realist. There's just a different set of experiences being compared. So it, we could say it fits in with one set of experiences, but not with the other. But that's perfectly consistent with objectivity. Uh, objective truths would still exist if, if that's how we're supposed to understand things. So again, what the anti-realist needs is going to be a substitute for objective truth, something that fits in when we say something is true. Something that we can substitute there, but it's not objectively true. And these claims uh, that are going to be true are such that the uncontroversially good statements are going to have that feature, and, such as, you know, rabbits or animals. So if we say that it has that feature, so the anti-realist needs to be able to say something that, so that, yes, this, whatever it is, we shouldn't call it truth, I guess, uh, the statement rabbits or animals has that feature. And of course, on the flip side, the uncontroversially bad statements lack it. So uh, consider the statement rabbits are carnivorous, right? Uh, we are going to say it's false, but we have to say it doesn't fit with our experience or something like that. Um, and of course, anti-realism has to have that feature, whatever it is. So the anti-realist needs this kind of substitute and whatever the substitute is, good statements need to have it, bad statements need to lack it, and anti-realism needs to have it, right, in order for this all to make sense. And that's going to be needed, of course, the, the first two, A and B, are going to be needed in order to avoid trouble like getting seriously injured by a bus, you know, the bus is coming, if you step in front of it, you will get harmed, and uh, so that's going to be a good statement, and you want to fit in your life with that, um, and you're going to have to have the features, whatever, fit with the good statements and bad statements as we describe. Okay, um, the problem is that fitting in with my experience doesn't fulfill these criteria. It doesn't fulfill all three of these criteria. And there doesn't seem to be any other proposed substitute that will fulfill these criteria either. And that's where Van Inwagen thinks the story ends, right? The an anti-realist has proposed something like this, fitting in with my experience, but it just doesn't work. And so what other alternatives are there? Well, let's consider just one last possibility. So uh, Hillary Putnam did propose a, a different alternative other than fitting in with my experience and not relying on the social construction argument. So he said that truth is what your peers let you get away with. Now, famously, uh, there's a, an immediate problem with this revealed by Alvin Plantinga's response at a, at a conference to, to this com comment, and that's simply, I'm one of your peers and I'm not gonna let you get away with that. And of course, Plantinga wasn't alone. Certainly Van Inwagen was not going to let him get away with that either, along with numerous other analytical metaphysicians. So uh, that wasn't going to work as well. And Van Inwagen uh, believes he has uh, considered all the possible alternatives and shown anti-realism to be wanting and thus our common Western metaphysic, the beliefs about objectivity and that there are objective truth and false claims, uh, that that must be the case and objectivity is correct. 